forget about that because the holidays come about, you know. But that is the thing. We're having, um, Carly is making a chili, and um, she is also bringing a veggie dip and veggies. And I am making a salad uh, and crackers and dressing, which is my go-to. And then I might make uh, the boys and my mommy some of those crackers, I, not crackers, but cookies I made. I might not, though. And um, what else do you need? I mean, what? People are so stuck with that tradition of a turkey. And, you know, I, I mean, but then again, I, I tried to find it. I was um, looking on the Facebook, and somebody said uh, in, in the big post, kind of like the big block, you know, why do non-vegans not think it's offensive to eat meat in front of me at the holiday or whatever. And there was this whole plethora of argument under there. This is what people love to engage in. And it was like, why do vegans think it's their job to condemn what I'm doing? To on and on, and then everybody had to chime in. I don't even know who it was. And I, I was just thinking, these people are not in the same mindset of you. What does that have to do with you? No, I realize it's it's cruel and it's unusual punishment to animals that didn't deserve that. But your harsh criticism of them is not going to change that. I mean, you know the worst time to try to talk to somebody about health or, or is at a holiday when they are stuck to their comfort food, their traditions, all these different things. It's the worst time, you know. Nobody invited you to the holiday meal with your soapbox to get up on and preach at people. Nobody wants to hear it, you know? So don't do it. Accommodate yourself. Save yourself, will you? Because we have a hard enough time doing that. And that sounds so like I don't care about that, but it's, I just don't feel like that's a way to win anybody over, you know? When they see how casual you are about it and how satisfied you are and how happy you are with your food and how vibrant you're looking, and how you still feel like playing with your grandkids after um, the, the meal's over and they're all feeling like, you know, lethargic doughboys. That is what wins people over. Because they might think about that after the fact. They might think, well, you know, Tammy was feeling and looking good, you know? And yeah. I mean, and even if somebody's gonna consider doing something different, they're not gonna consider that at the holiday banquet table right what do y'all think so um and that's another thing trying to veganize the whole meal if you've got people i mean if you don't want to cook that have them bring something you know or you're spending all this extra time and effort trying to turn fruits and veg into a, a molded tofu turkey you know what i mean and nobody likes it everybody like hates you for doing that <laughs> you're not eating it you're eating raw Furthermore, how healthy is that tofu actually, you know? It's not healthy, especially if you are not choosing organic and sprouted. There's some big issues with that. But, um, I mean, why? Now, when I made the, um, those little cookies, see, I had put oats, banana, it had cacao, it had some dates in there for binding. I think that's all. And now I don't know how I made it, so it, it will be just luck. Did I put that recipe somewhere? I might have put it on Instagram. Anyway, um, so I'm not gonna eat those. That, that wouldn't, that's not where I live right there, but that I don't mind and um, I don't know. Why do, why do we as vegans always want to make something look like a hot dog or I don't understand that like those kind of bridge foods that they're really not healthy I mean uh, I my team has tried to get me to come up with several times like um, replacement like a, a little ebook like replacement things like well if if I am trying to get off cheese what would I eat instead but it's almost like they want to see like a transition, like vegan cheeses. I've never tasted vegan cheese in my life. When I transitioned over to a plant diet, there weren't those things. There might have been, but I was unaware of it. I knew there was tofu. And I used that a couple of times in like a Dr. Furman dressing recipe. But um, 
I just feel like you can get stuck there too, you know, and then you don't get vibrant health, and it's like, why am I even bothering? That's kind of what I feel like about that, but um, I don't know, just l allowing people, being in allowance, releasing that, and just, I don't know, people too, um, somebody asked me the other day, are we, are we not going to talk about like the holidays, or I, I didn't give you a, a specific meal plan like that, because it depends on what you're you're doing. Um, the pie was a good one, but basically I always, anytime there's a holiday, I have a beautiful salad. Um, I like to put some things in there like a little pomegranate seeds or, uh, something that, or maybe like some little mandarins, something that I wouldn't normally put in there, which seems festive to me. I think, oh, party food, you know, <laughs> party, get out of control, right? You got some mandarins in there. <laughs> and then, um. I don't know. I have some crackers or, and really I'm not assuming, though Though my group, um, see, Christopher's usually starving because he's broke out there, you know? <laughs> so now it's like, oh, free food, he'll eat anything, you know? <laughs> and then, um, of course, I mean, my dad, he, somebody was posting in here that they made food and, um, oh, it was Fallon. Fallon said, uh, her dinner was excellent, and she let her dad try it. I want to think Fallon is about Carly's age, and he said it was pretty good. He never um, said that about any of my food. His response is always, it's fine, and he said it was pretty good. And my dad, if he's like, that's pretty good, I'd be like, what? Like, like, like he's giving me a cheerleading party, like it was epic, you know? <laughs> anyway, so... I don't know, and, and if you want to make dressing, and people are used to eating salt, um, put a little Himalayan salt in one, and you're not eating that, so don't put any in your other one. I did that last time, which was a uh, Halloween that people came over, and um, yeah. Most of all, I, I tell you what I'm thankful of, is I am thankful for, I have a, a new, like, relaxed feeling about entertaining people at my home that I used to not have. Is Carly on here? And uh, I I just don't feel like that anymore. I feel like, I mean, I don't want anybody wiping our, their dirty feet on, on my cream color rug. I would have never bought that color rug. I got it for free, okay? But still, I don't want to mess it up because then I'll have to buy another one and that's not my spending plan and then I'm out of a rug, you know? So the rug is the problem, but I might just like roll that up and slide it in the next room, and then I don't have to worry if Griffin is walking through there with his cookie. I'm not having to say, now don't, you know, don't get that on the rug. Don't, you know, take your shoes off at the door. I don't want to be that granny, you know? My, my kids grew up with that mom. Like, you know, I'd walk into my daughter's room, she's spraying her hair, and I'm like looking at those exhausts, you know, looking at my blinds thinking that was going to land on my blinds. Or like, I don't know. It's I just am. I just am grateful that I'm not that right now. I just and it's streamlined in my house. There's nothing to be messed up. There's no fancy throw pillows. There's no. You could spill your drink on the couch. I can wipe that off. You know. There's just not. There's nothing to destroy. You know. I just anything in here. I, I could sell at any moment. I would have no attachment to it. Um. So. Also, going to your meal, like, what what else could you be grateful for? Like, like the turning of the leaves or, or the fact that you you have a place to go? Or, and if you don't, the fact that at this moment in time, you are breathing in relaxation of being with yourself, you know? Or, or maybe you're single and you think, well, if I had a partner, well, maybe sometime later I'll have a partner and I'll be thinking, you know, it was pretty great when I was like a single granny, you know? I mean, it's like we don't appreciate where we are, you know what I mean? So, um, vegan cheese, you're not missing out on anything. Yeah, it should be about family, not about food. But it's not. And I saw somebody who was talking about, about Thanksgiving, how it is really such a gluttonous holiday, you know, and we're, it's supposed to be about being grateful and people like starving. I mean, it's really sad. A gluttonous situation. 
and most people, frankly, having to have a few drinks before they um, go to their holiday party because they can't hardly tolerate their family. Somebody told me that last, uh, it was the year before last, that I was seeing that um, he used to be a big drinker and that for every holiday, he could hardly remember it because before the event even started, he was basically drunk because he just didn't know how to function without that. You know, or us just like distractions, just totally distracted. We're going to talk about like food addiction and how, how food addiction, just like people are addicted to media or anything that, that dopes down their thinking. You know, it's the easy button. Um, but really, too, when you're, when you're about to have that food, thinking about what is your plate going to look like. Just like role playing. No one else is going to make you do it. They're not going to care. They're not going to care. Frankly, they, they would be happier if you just eat like they do because then they wouldn't have to feel uncomfortable. Like, why is she out of her box that I keep her in? You know, the box where she has a glass of wine with me before the dinner or, or the box where, you know, we all have a third piece of cake. Like, why is she doing different? I don't want to do different, and that makes me feel uncomfortable. See? So they don't want to deal with that. So they would prefer you be the same because they don't want to change. You're not asking them to change. But what does it look like? You know? What does your plate look like? Thinking about that ahead, going to your holiday festival, and seeing that through. How great will that feel? How great will it feel? And how bad will you feel when you... I saw somebody on YouTube yesterday, and she is like... Um, nutritionist type of a body figure competition lady and I really like her channel because I like her personality and um but I'll, she she's always given these dietitian tips and her advice to people for the holiday was you know what lighten up on yourself have this meal and then maybe one after it and have one plate fill it up basically as high as you can with anything you want why do you want to dip back in to the things that you were addicted to? Why do you want to kick those cravings back up, right? I mean, you've gotten off meth, but just during this one time, during this small bleep of time, have all the meth you want, okay? And then maybe a little bit afterwards, because that would be the leftover meth, and then get back to what you were doing. Aren't you going to have to detox from that again? It's the same thing. It's chemicals, right? And it also has the ability to roll you into... Well, Black Friday came and you go out to shopping with your mama. Well, y'all always go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a coffee and some donuts for breakfast or muffins or whatever. Well, okay, well, you'll just go with that because you already screwed up yesterday. And after all, it's the weekend. There are leftovers. You'll begin again on Monday. Or will you really? Because now we've entered into the festival of Christmas extravaganza. It is a slippery slope. So what if you don't just don't do it? I mean, how great will you feel about yourself? What if you actually take your journal with you? Your hubby's driving and you brought your journal. You know what you're gonna, you know you brought your food, you visualize what you're gonna look like eating that, how you're gonna feel when you leave, how when you push yourself away from the turkey table, you are gonna get up with your results and integrity intact. You will not have yet again proven yourself as a liar to yourself. Well, you might be saying, well, Tanya, it's Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter when it is. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving. You are a new you. It is new you November, right? Where you have become... I mean, do you know anybody that's like, a, a, like the fit girl? Or like Mr. John? He's the fit dude. He goes on vacation. Does Mr. John think, well, screw it, I'll just exercise when I get home? No! <laughs> he goes to the gym while he's on vacation, or he walks two miles on the beach, or he... That is who he is. Does he go out to this man's retreat, uh, he was telling me about not long ago, and eat the, the breakfast buffet bar? He went with all the guys. He did like a prayer meeting and a guitar thing that morning. And he had his regular oatmeal, okay, and 
he had berries or whatever he normally has on it. Right? And he had, I don't know, omelet, whatever he normally eats. That's what he ate. Stay the course. I mean, and, and Thanksgiving, we've talked about this before, what will he eat? The same thing he always eats. Right? Because that's who he is. I mean, don't you want to change who you are? Because that's when the results are going to happen. Right? Not when we keep on giving ourselves permission. Oh, we'll just have one. Or, um, I mean, what if you were a child and, okay, you were highly allergic, for example, to walnuts. And your mom always made sure, or you couldn't have peanuts, always that you didn't have those. You didn't have those. Well, what if as your mom's like, well, you just have a few. You have to parent yourself, like, right? Could you do it if you were a kid when you were just being served all the food? Yes, you could, right? You have to parent yourself. People say, well, I can't do it during the holidays. If a million dollars was sitting on the other side of these holidays, could you do it? Yes, you could. If you say you can't do it, then it might be because your why is not strong enough. If your why is you want a million dollars, then you would do it, right? Yeah, Christy's saying she's so excited. Spending the holiday with your family and not having to consume garbage. I love that. You know? Um, you might get there and people might say, uh, well, there she is, a health nut. And I just heard a little thing, Dr. Doug Graham what had it on his YouTube. And he said he could tend to think, uh, well, if I'm a health nut, what are you? The sick nut? Don't retaliate. Respond with love. And, and you could say, like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm into the health thing, you know. You don't have to say, well, as for me, I care what I put in my body. It's not a trash can. <laughs> You're asking for an argument. Do you really want an argument? Right? Or people are going to say, oh, here, Tanya, have this turkey leg and rub it up in front of my lips, you know. And I might say, that's serving you well. <laughs> Make a joke out of it, you know, or just move along. What does that have to do with you? People are really, people usually don't really care what you're eating and, and what you're doing. They care what they're doing. They care what they're doing. Anyway, think about the activation rule. You're about to get your plate. You have all the stuff out there. All the choices are yours. Nobody is going to make you do it. Nobody's coming to save you. Nobody. Nobody will even notice if you put, for example, for example, the regular ranch dressing in the bottom of your plate and put the salad on top of it. They won't notice if you like, you're trying to like hide the food. You're cheating yourself. Um, so breathe in for four seconds. You don't have to close your eyes like you're in some Zen mode and the line, you know, <laughs> and just hold that breath and breathe out and move into action. You have a plan, do the plan or don't do it, right? Take your journal with you. You get back in the car, your hubby's driving, you break out your journal, you jot down what you had or furthermore, you jot it down before and you get back in the car. And you put a big old smiley face on there. How about that? Let's see what else I want to tell you about that. Being mindful of the bite, the one bite, the one bite to the demise of you. Most people are all or nothing creatures. Even if they don't think they are, 
one little slip up really gets them way off course, y'all think. That is not my food. That's not my food. That is not my food. That's not my food. Oops. Who said that? Christy, that sums it up. You know, that's what I, I used to say. I don't really have to say that now. I don't really have to think now. You're making these cookies for the baby. That's not yours. That's a, a little slippery place for people too when um, they've got a healthier version of something. That is a gateway drug. <laughs> I'm sorry, I sound extreme. It, <laughs> it's a gateway drug. Does anybody agree? I mean, talk about this right quick about um, fruit sugar fruit juice sugar let's think about this when you have fruit juice you get a drastic blood sugar spike with no fiber to balance that okay am I saying you could never have a, hey Rhonda Rhonda got me this necklace for my birthday do y'all like it look Carly made it isn't that beautiful I am fancy today <laughs> So, um, yes, the, am I saying you can never have a juice? No, I'm not, but I just want you to be mindful of something. Think about this, blood, drastic blood sugar spikes, okay, with no fiber. Um, it, it's a huge amount of calories that you wouldn't think you're bringing in, you know, um, that, that you could be getting the same taste and actually more satisfaction from the fruit itself. And here's an idea, you could pair it with greens. I know I've never said that before, but if you did, you would really like up your game. I mean, I really like to balance my blood sugar, therefore I'm in control of what I'm choosing, you know? Because when your blood sugar is erratic, you that tends to take over your mind somehow. So, um. Also, more weight control when you have whole fruit versus fruit juice. And when you're bringing in like, um, let's say a green smoothie versus, maybe you're having like orange and um, maybe you're having spinach and uh, a little chia in there versus like, and maybe you have like even a 64 ounce, maybe you have like a 32 ounce jar of juice. That's a lot of juice. <coughs> With just use you know the mineral difference in that huge um, blood sugar balance different huge your satiation levels much better um, the juice will not really satiate you for long but satisfy you um, the liver and pancreas can only handle so much fruit juice at once did you know it, it can raise your triglycerides because of that Which makes me think of, um, well, y'all remind me to ask, say something about Matt Monarch in a minute. Um, anyway, fruit juice makes me feel like I'm going to pass out. If I just have fruit juice on its own, I do not feel good. It's like, because it's a, it's a blood sugar spike and drop down, you know? Think about this. You would never, most people wouldn't, sit there and eat as many apples as you would consume if you were going to have a jar of juice like 32 ounces that's not a huge amount i could drink that on my way to the mailbox and back and it's at my front door you know it's like one of those little things that hangs on the house um which makes me think that my mailman all the time i get to talk to him and i'm thinking this year he and usually i take the girls and the guy at my curb market up like a little five dollars and i know it's not much but you know anyway and a little card and um to for Christmas, but this year I think I'll give Mr. Tommy, he helps me with my grass, and um, Mr. Jim, he's my mailman, a little something, wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, um, I mean, what about making the holidays more like that? Like getting excited about giving, getting excited about a little bitty something that can make somebody say, oh, well, wow, like she thought about me, you know? I used to be a manicurist for many years, and um, people, 
I would do their nails you know, every two weeks, so I was kind of like their bartender. I mean, I knew everything that was going on with everybody. <laughs> and um, they would bring me in. A lot of them would bring me Christmas ornaments, and I so I had all these different little Christmas ornaments that were all unique, and and they were all fabulous because they were probably like a ten dollar ornament. I would never have spent ten dollars on one ornament, you know. But I had all these great ornaments, and Carly has those now. But anyway, so just thinking about. Seeing the holidays is different, you know? I mean, making a list tomorrow of what are you grateful for? I've gotten sidetracked. Okay, so back to the fruit juice. Think, does anybody know uh, how many apples, medium to large apples, it would take? And this is if you have a good juicer. If you have one that really, there's a lot of juice and, and pulp and all left, some of them just waste a lot of produce. But let's say you have a masticating juicer, single auger. How many apples do you think, medium to large, it would take to produce a 32-ounce jar of juice? I will need to play some Jeopardy music. We'll hear what y'all have to say. I don't see y'all answering quick enough because I don't get it yet. <laughs> it would take... 12 large apples. Would you ever sit down and eat? Lady, that was good. Depends on how big they are, you know. 12. Amy, girl! <laughs> Amy, ding, 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 ding. Ding a ling. And you know what, Teresa, it could take 30 if they were small or if your juicer sucks, you know. So anyway, let's just say it takes 12 large apples. Have you ever had a snack of three apples and a couple of stalks of celery? Do you know how filling that is? Okay, that gives you control at snack time. I have never known anybody to sit down and eat that many apples. But you could kick back that amount of juice, right? The body, I really don't think is equipped to manage that kind of, of no fiber fruit juice coming in. 20 oranges to make 32 ounces of juice. That is insanity. You know how expensive that is? I'm not saying juices aren't great. I'm just saying therapeutic green juices, like medicinal, you know what I mean? It's a different song and dance. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I've got, it takes about 15 oranges. How many did you say? 20, so it depends on what kind. You know how some of them are juicier and pulpier? I really like oranges and that are a very pulp rich too. But, um, and I love grapefruits because they really give me a, a sense of stability too because they're lower glycemic, you know? Um, but anyway, thinking about this, a, does anybody know how many calories a 32 ounce jar of apple juice would have? It has 466. That is a lot. Think about that. And you just had that like haphazardly, like you didn't need to count that or, that's 500 calories. If you had an additional 500 calorie jar of juice every day on top of your energy needs, meaning how many calories your body needs, extra 500 calories. Okay, well you did that every day. Okay, that is 3,500 extra calories in a, in a week. Seven times five, yes. That is the energy that equals a pound, did you know? For most people. And then, you do that every week, that's four pounds a month you could have gained. Four pounds a month, and you do that every month, and that jar of juice just put 48 pounds on you in a year. <laughs> I mean, people want to act like calories don't matter. Why else would we be not seeing results? I mean, you could have a body slow down. You could have, I get it, all those things. But over long term, why else will we see long term raw foodists gaining weight? Why? I, I'm going to pop two videos in here. One of them is Andrew Perlo, and he did this experiment on himself where he ate more fruit than he normally did every day and he gained like 30 pounds in a month. It might have been more than that. 
And then he also did a little clip of um, of some people that are longer term raw foodists asking them did they think you could get fat on fruit. And they weren't even talking about fruit juice. Fruit. The bottom line is, I know this is going to be shocking, if you consume more calories than your body is using, you can absolutely gain weight. Now, if you're eating raw food, can you eat a larger volume of food than you used to? Probably, unless your diet is based on nuts and seeds and dried fruit, right, and cacao and nut butter and fruit juice, right? I mean, if, if you're a small person that ain't moving a lot, okay, and you've been on medications, you've been dieting up and down your whole dang life, let's say you're needing about 1,500 calories, for example, to function, and you have three jars of juice, ding, you just got them, you know? It's just something to think about. Um, I mean, and you'll see these festivals, and it's like, it's like, you know what it's like. It's like a gluttonous situation, a, a raw vegan extravaganza of, of banana eating contest. And how many bananas do you need? Like, this is a health event, but I'm going to participate in gluttony and overstuffing my body, which is not good for my digestion or anything else. I'm going to feel like crap, and I'm going to do that to what? Have the title of the, the fastest, mostest banana eating granny in town? I mean, that does sound cool, but you know, at the, at the expense of feeling bad, at the expense of I'm at this festival where I'm wearing a bikini and now I look like I'm six months pregnant, but it's a banana baby. Um, what about uh, yeah. orange juice? A jar of orange juice is 450 calories. How about grape juice? Also, it's expensive. It's expensive. Do you ever see like people juicing all this fruit and saying, my gosh, like what kind of job are these people doing? Because it's expensive. Um, it's expensive. You go to, um, you want to have, if you're doing a low glycemic green juice for therapeutic purposes, have something that's water rich as a base in there, like um, celery or cucumber, that kind of thing. And then you can add in, like say you're trying to get your iron up, maybe you're adding in parsley, maybe you're adding in um, spinach and you've got like a cucumber base to kind of to let those nutrients iron nutrients ride on that and you got a little bit of acidic in there to help uptake the the iron it helps your body absorb that okay so maybe you have like a lemon in there um and you might think well that's not going to taste good well it's medicine you know and and plus you'll get used to it you'll be fine a jar of grape juice is 620 calories Um, and even carrot juice, you're looking at 360 calories on carrot. Carrot juice is one thing that, uh, it's very healthy, but it can also, it depends on how your blood sugar, I don't function well with that either. Um, but yet yeah, looking at like celery juice, for example, it's about 160 calories for a 32 ounce and it, it's not going to jack your blood sugar around either. I mean, I can have that on an empty stomach and not be phased by it. Um, so just thinking about that, could you eat that many fruits that you're fixing to drink? You know, but green juice on the other hand, you know, we live in a toxic world. We live in a state where people's bodies aren't in pristine nature anymore. So you could be doing green juices for anemia, joint pain, um, getting rid of acidic crystals in your, your joints acne, um, heavy on the herbs, heavy on the greens. So, you know, having your fruit in whole form, I mean, if you're having that in green smoothies, you're intact with the fiber in there, you know? And I feel like you're adding in the greens too. I mean, it's so much more balanced. Or if you're having fruit for snack. Um, I've worked with this girl that she just could not seem to stand her plan, couldn't stay, couldn't stay. And I kept on saying, what are you eating? Like, and she would, 
She wasn't giving me the whole story. She wasn't pairing any of this fruit she was eating with greens. She was wanting to systematically under eat and underbalance that, and then at night she was falling off again and again and again. People tend to want to say they're doing different, but when you really get to looking, they aren't doing different. The thing about um, fruit juice too, uh, listen to this, and, and sugar. It blocks this thing in our body called leptin receptors. Okay, that's like a hormone. Meanwhile, it also raises your insulin level. Leptin is a hormone that tells our body, tells you you're full, okay? So it gives you the sense, okay, I need to stop eating, all right? But you're blocking leptin. Adding sugar to things, uh, even the, the fruit sugar in balance can do this. When insulin is raised, it makes it hard for the body to access and burn through stored fat. Do you know? If you're eating all day, like just a pocket full of dates all day, your body is constantly having an insulin response and you're not going to burn in and burn in through your stored glycogen and then into your body fat. You're just not. It's very hard for your body to regenerate like that, you know? Um, sugar causes belly fat, you know? Worst kind of disease. I mean, one of the fastest ways you can start putting on weight is adding in alcohol. The body receives that like sugar, you know, and it has all kinds of other detrimental effects too that really puts you back, back, back from even, it's not just the calories. It's not just the toxic poison that it is. And we're going to talk about that next week. Uh, also, with, with the refined sugar too, because that's one of those things you can say, well, it's vegan, or, well, I'm just adding this coconut sugar or whatever. But it can be addictive. You know, there's a dopamine reaction and release in the brain, you know, that makes you want to come on back for some more. Meanwhile, while blocking the leptin hormone that tells you you're full, that's a, that's a bad duo, right? I mean, how much refined sugar do we need? We got a lot of people in the vegan movement screaming at you to pour sugar in your smoothies or... or Processed sugar is fueling their life and they're screaming it so loud at people that people are actually somehow believing that's a good idea. Sugar is the epitome of what should be in the dictionary of what a junk food is. It's calories with no nutrients, right? And that's fruit on the other hand, you know, versus refined sugar has loads of nutrients, especially you're having in its whole form, you know? vitamin, uh, nutrient-rich, mineral-rich, and the fiber with the water in there, with the juice. Y'all got anything to say about that? Yeah. Sugar is more addictive than cocaine in rat studies, did y'all know? Yeah, here's a good example of this. Uh, because there's so much talk of calorie cramming, I was trying to eat 2,000 to 2,500 calories a day. I got away from your channel and was listening to various raw foodies. Well, that's not to say that some people, the thing with eating enough raw food came into light when people eating a raw food diet, you have to understand that one Pop-Tart, let me look at something, because I always underestimate this. Too fast with one hand picking. One pop tart pastry, for example, this is just a good example, is 210 calories. Now, if you're used to having that for a snack, and instead you're going to have fruit, okay, that would be a good, good thing for you, and you're going to balance it. 
So you would have to realize if you were going to have, for example, peaches, it depends on the size of them, but those can be around 40 calories. Look how many peaches you would need, okay? And, or, or even, let's say, um, I don't know, what do you want to eat? Apples, okay, those are, it depends on the size of those, but that could be two and a half apples, it could be three if they're small. And then you got some celery in there to balance it. Do you realize the difference in the volume? Do you realize that, you know those little bags, like 100 calorie snack bags of cheese its That calories equals one pound of salad. So back in the day, you know, people could tend to under eat on raw food because they didn't realize this and then they become binge prone. That's a problem. But now that's not what's going on. And anyway, I want you to see those videos about about overeating on fruit, okay? You can easily overeat on nuts and seeds. You know, you can overeat on fat and and date, nut and date, laden I don't know, nut loaf thing, or crackers that are nothing but flax seeds. Do you know how many flax seeds it takes to make a tray of crackers if you don't bulk it up with anything? A lot, and there is a lot of fat in that. And plus, then you're gonna have a flax log in your gut and you don't understand why you're bloated, you know? Or, you know, lethargic. So. You don't understand, well, I thought I was going to, you know, I would be like not as constipated or not. Well, you've got a nut, a, a seed log in your gut, you know. <laughs> so just think about that. That's why, though, but really getting people off track. The thing about it is you need as many calories as your body needs, okay? A little less if you're wanting to lose weight and a little more if you want to gain weight, right? And another thing is as you lose weight, your body typically needs less food to maintain itself unless simultaneously you've started exercising more because you feel better so you're burning more so you're probably about the same right that's a little variable right there but the thing about raw food is if you are basing a lot of your bulking up everything with i showed y'all that calorie density chart if you are bulking everything up with high nutrients, low calorie, you are always going to be full and therefore always in control of your little self, you know? And people are like, wow, you really have willpower. And I'm thinking, it's not that. I have three apples and four stalks of celery in my stomach, okay? I'm just not hungry, right? How about that? So that is what I was going to tell y'all today. And I am proud of the group.